Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through quick sort algorithm. So basically, in the last lecture, we have gone through the problem solving based on the algorithm only we have did it. Okay, so in this lecture, let us go through the quick sort algorithm and I'll be I'll I'll try to redo the same problem that we have discussed using algorithm step by step. Okay, so basically quick sort. So quick sort also comes under divide and conquer. So basically here also you'll be dividing the problem into multiple parts and solving it. Okay. So basically quick sort of a comma p comma r. A is the array, p is the initial, the first value index, r is the last value index. If p is less than r, you'll be continuously partitioning it. You'll be dividing it into two parts. So how you will be dividing it into two parts is the question. Okay. So the whole logic will be in this five to six lines only guys. There is nothing much to write in code but the only thing that you should learn is you need to understand how it is running that's it if you get the grip or idea on that it's over quick sort is a piece of cake for you okay okay so initially you will be assuming the last element as x so this is nothing but pivot guys so we discussed about pivot right you'll be taking some random value or the last value into it okay and p minus one is equals to i so we are designing this i for some reason you'll be understanding it for swapping the elements we will be using this i guys so you can assume that for swap okay then you will be writing a for loop for of j from a p to r minus 1 so basically you will not be comparing the last element right if you remember the algorithm that we have with the problem that we have discussed in 67 we compared 67 with 43, 98, 23 in this way, like 1 to 7. We didn't compare with 8, right? So that is the reason why you will be stopping up at R minus 1. Okay. So after that, you will start your comparison. So based on the comparison, if you get less than or equal to, you will be incrementing it by 1. Okay. So you will be incrementing it by 1. And you will be exchanging the values beside values. Like assume here. So let us take the second case. So he, here you got, okay, just give me a second. Okay. So here when you compare 67 and 98, there is no issue. When you compare with the 67 and 23, so 23 is less than 67. So in this case, you swapped the second element with the third element because the second element is greater than our requirement. So we are indirectly swapping them based on these, this condition. Okay. So I hope it's clear. Okay, so based on that condition, you are incrementing the value of i and you are swapping it with the jth element. Okay, once this operation is done, at the end you will be exchanging the i plus 1th element with r. So i plus 1 at the end. So if you ask me where it is at the end, so the i value will be here. So i plus 1 with r. So these two will be swapped. So at the end you will be getting the result in this way. Okay. So we will be returning at the end i plus 1. So again, you will be following the same process for the rest of the parts. So this is the whole logic guys. So now I think it, it's a bit clear for you than previously. Previously, if you are having 50% confusion, now it, it may be reduced to 25. Okay. So now let us reduce it more if possible. Okay. Okay. So let us continue with an example. So with the example, I think everyone will be getting a clear idea about this. Okay. Okay. So don't get scared guys. Please, if possible, take a piece of paper and solve it. I'll be just explaining you in my book because I wrote every condition clearly in my book guys. So that is the only reason why I'm not writing it again because even if I write, I'll be writing in some other language. So that is the reason why explaining in the book is far better when compared to be writing it again. Okay. So using the algorithm. So you have example which we have done here. So here I just compared like normal human, how a human works like that. So but computer doesn't work like that, right? So it does not think a lot. It will be just following the steps that you give. That's it. Okay. So here you gave an array to it. 43, 98, 23, 11, 61, 59, 4 and 67. 1 to 8 elements. Okay. So the first element is considered as P and the last element is considered as R. And we already discussed that we are assuming the last element as the pivot. So X equal to 67 and I equal to 0 initially. If you recall it. We have just did it P minus 1. So P is nothing but 1. So P minus 1 is 0. Okay. Clear? Okay. So now the initial values, please don't consider the pink pen values. Please consider the inner values. I'll be, I'll be telling you why I did the change update or change them. Okay. So initially you will be checking J equal to 1. 
so if you recall it we divided it we entered into this partition value and we got x equal to we substituted these two values now we started the loop so from j to r minus 1 so that is indirectly 1 to r minus 1 is nothing but 7 so 1 to 7 you need to perform this loop 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay so that's what i have just did it here okay so j equal to 1 if the element in the in the index is less than or equal to our value then we will be doing the operations okay so here the value that is in that position is less than or equal to our value then we will be swapping the i ith element with the jth element or you can say i plus one th element with jth element so it completely depends on the index guys so here i took one as the index so i'll be adding one so zero plus one so you'll be swapping 43 with 43 only there is no change okay so you'll be understanding it further on don't worry so j equal to 2 98 less than or equal to 67 so it is false so there, there are no steps 23 less than or equal to 67 that is true so you need to swap second with third i plus 1 plus j so i is here previously so now i has been moved here okay so again you will be doing j is equals to 4 11 less than or equal to 67 that is true you will be swapping 3 comma 4 okay again you will be swapping these two are swapped again you will be swapping these two okay so similarly j equal to 5 61 less than 67 that is also true you will be swapping 4 comma 5 again you will be swapping these two and slowly you will be pushing 98 guys slowly you will be pushing 98 away okay so at the end loop the loop, whole loop operations are done and the value of 98 will be here in 7th place and in 8th place we will be having 67. So at the end you will be swapping 7 and 8. Hence 68 will be in its spot. So 67 will be getting its spot and 98 will be after it. Okay. So this is nothing but the same, same things which we have discussed in our previous lecture. Guys, Just I have written in terms of uh, steps like j equal to 1 for j equal to 2 in that way. That's it. Nothing more than that. Okay, so here we got 43, 23, 11, 61, 59, 4, 67 and 98. Only 67 is swapped. Even though we can identify that 98 is swapped, but it is not swapped yet by the computer. Okay, so here we are having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 elements. So n minus 1, that is nothing but 1, 2, 5. We will be processing the operation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so you will be comparing this with the first element. Whether it is greater, no, greater, no, greater, no, greater, no, greater, no. So there is nothing to swap, you will be directly swapping the last and the first. So we finally got 1 comma 6, we need to swap them. So we got 4 in its position. So now 4 is also out of the list. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So only 5 elements are in the list now. So if you compare 43, 43 with 23, yes 23 is less than 43. Okay. So similarly 43 and 11, 43 is less than 11. So you need to swap them. But they are swapped in those positions only. So there is no change in them. Whereas 43 and 61, there is no change. No change. So your i is stuck here only. Sorry, here. So you will be doing i plus 1 and swapping with this. So you will be swapping these two. So you will be getting, at the end you will be, you will be finding the sweet spot for 43. Okay. So I hope everyone got a clear idea on these three values. So further continuing on, you will be again doing for this, for this part. So basically you will be following left, like same in the trees and everything you will be doing left right in divide and conquer algorithm. So in the same way you will be doing here also for the left. So here you will be doing for 11 again. So 11 will also be satisfied like slowly you will be doing. So I have written every step here guys. So please analyze it once again. It will be clear for you. So I hope everyone got a clear idea on quicksort. Okay. So if you ask me what is the time complexity. So this is, this is also having the time complexity same as normal sorting algorithms the best case algorithm so that's nothing but big go off and log in okay so the only drawback of quick sort is that if you already gave an sorted array it will take big o of n square to sort it so that's a funny fact about quick sort so i hope everyone got a clear idea so if you ask me how i am saying that n log n so basically partitioning so if you recall here partitioning this partitioning takes from j to r minus 1 so if there are 8 elements here it took 7 times almost so that is nothing but n equal to n right so n times it is going to take so that is the reason why partitioning will come under big o of n and the quick sort the above small algorithm 
so it is dividing into two 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 dividing right so that is the reason why it becomes into big o of log n okay so i hope everyone got a clear idea on quick sort so in the next lecture we will be going through selection sort which is easier than any other algorithm so let us meet in the next tutorial thank you thanks for watching